Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving two equations inspired by Black Pen, Red Pen. I'm sure most of you are familiar with him. He's got an awesome YouTube channel. He's a great mathematician and an inspirational teacher. I'll be, in I'll be including the links to his video and channel down below. Let's get started. So we have two equations, 4x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0, and 4x cubed plus 6x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 0. I want you to notice that these two, these two equations kind of look similar, especially if you look at the cubic, cubic term and the constant terms. But their solution methods will be somewhat different. So let's go ahead and dive in. Here's our first equation. 4x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. So in order to solve this equation, I would like to isolate 4x cubed by itself on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and do that. That means I'm going to be subtracting everything, so it's going to look like negated negative 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. Now, if you look at the right-hand side very carefully, you'll notice that it's very similar to a perfect cube. In other words, it looks like x minus 1 quantity cubed. But the only thing that's missing there is x cubed. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add x cubed to both sides. So let's go ahead and do that. If we add x cubed to both sides, plus x cubed and plus x cubed, we're going to be getting something like this. 5x cubed equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. Now, if you look at the right-hand side carefully, you'll agree with me that this is equal to x minus 1 quantity cubed. And that's supposed to be an x cubed, not x squared. So we do have a perfect cube on the right-hand side, and 5x cubed is also the cube of something. To find out what it is, let's go ahead and take the cube root of both sides. And you know that we can do that if two things are equal, then their cube roots are also equal. We're talking about real numbers here, of course. When you take the cube root, you're going to get something like cube root of 5 multiplied by x. And then the right-hand side is going to give you x minus 1. Since our goal is to solve for x, let's go ahead and factor out the x here. So it's going to give us the cube root of 5 minus 1 times the quantity x equals negative 1. Now, I want to solve for x, so it makes sense if we divide both sides by this radical expression on the left-hand side. So our expression is going to look like x equals negative 1 over cube root of 5 minus 1. So now we do have an irrational denominator and we do want to rationalize the denominator. But this, these are not square roots, so rationalizing is a little more complicated here. So let's go ahead and remember which formula we do need to use. We do need the difference of two cubes, which can be written as a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. That's the formula I need, and this is my a minus b. So in other words, a is equal to cube root of 5, and b is equal to 1 in this case. And I do need to multiply my expression by the second factor, which is a squared plus a b plus b squared. So it's going to look like this, cube root of 25 plus a b is going to be cube root of 5 plus b squared is just going to be 1. And then, of course, I need to do the same thing at the bottom. Now, from here, the top is going to be negated. Everything will be negative. And at the bottom, you should be getting a cubed plus b cubed as a result. And if you do that, you're going to get 5 minus 1, which is equal to 4. So we basically get this solution for the first equation. And as you know, this is an irrational number. And obviously, the other solutions are not real because we only got one solution from here. The others must be complex. So that concludes the first equation. And let's go ahead and take a look at our second equation. Our second equation, like I said earlier, looks pretty similar to the first one because it contains the 4x cubed and the 1. The only terms that are different are the ones in the middle. But that doesn't mean we're going to use something uh, similar for the solution method. We're going to be actually using something very different. And here's what we're going to do. First of all, pay attention to the coefficients. I have 4, 6, 4, 1. What would happen if I also had 1, and then it would look like 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Let me go ahead and write those numbers down, 
and I hope that those numbers will make sense to you. If they didn't, I'll tell you what it is. These are the numbers from Pascal's triangle, the fourth row. If you go up, you're going to get 1, 3, 3, 1, and then 1, 2, 1, and then 1, 1. If you go down, you know how to continue, but just by adding the adjacent terms and starting and ending with 1. So now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, we're missing 1 here, which means, and if you look at the powers, x cubed, x squared, x, they're going down. So I do need the highest power. In other words, I'm going to be writing this, writing this expression. Let me go ahead and write, rewrite it. 4x cubed plus 6x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 0. And I would like to add x to the fourth power to both sides. Now, what happens if I add x to the fourth power to both sides? The left-hand side from binomial theorem becomes the fourth root of something because the coefficients work, powers of x work, everything works. So the left-hand side can be written as x plus 1 to the fourth power. And then the right-hand side, of course, is going to be x to the fourth power. Now, you might be thinking at this point, what is that supposed to mean? What happens if I take the fourth root of both sides, just like the cube root, right? We can do that, can't we? Let's go ahead and do it. So let's fourth root both sides. And from here, if the power of 4 disappears, I get something like this, x plus 1 equals x. But that's meaningless because when the x cancels out, you get something like 1 equals 0. That's nonsense. Uh-oh. We, did we make a mistake? We didn't. But you have to be careful if you're solving equations with even powers. Why? Because any negative quantity, when squared or to raise to a fourth power, becomes positive. So we have to be very careful here and write our expression like this. I'm going to write this x plus 1 to the fourth power equals x to the fourth power. So I'm going to think about the following. x to the fourth power can also be written as negative x to the fourth power. Therefore, this gives us two possibilities. I'm either going to get x plus 1 equals x from here. As you know, this did not make sense. Or I'm, I'm going to be getting x plus 1 equals negative x. So this is rejected because it doesn't really give us anything meaningful. But this equation can be solved. You can just go ahead and add x to both sides. And that's going to give you 2x plus 1 equals 0. And from here, as you know, we can solve this equation and write it as x equals negative 1 half. So that's our real solution. But I know you guys are you know, familiar with complex numbers and you love complex numbers. So I'm also going to give you the complex solutions as a bonus. OK, yay. Let's go ahead and do it. So now I'm going to take this equation again, x plus 1 to the fourth equals x to the fourth. Now, to be able to find the real solutions, I'm not going to do something crazy like polynomial division or something. We're going to use some interesting manipulation. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to subtract x to the fourth power. And notice that we have a difference of two squares. Well, there are difference of fourth powers, but fourth powers are also squares because there's something squared squared. So I can just kind of write it like x plus 1 squared squared, and this one as x squared squared. Now, what is that supposed to mean? That we have difference of two squares. So why don't we just go ahead and write it as such. a squared minus b squared, remember, can be written as a plus b times a minus b. So if I go ahead and split it up, I should be getting x plus 1 quantity squared plus x squared. That's one of my factors. The other factor is going to be x plus 1 squared minus x squared. And we're going to set it equal to 0. This is easy because what we can do is just look at each factor. If you set the first factor equal to 0, you get something. But let's go ahead and do the first, uh, second one because that's more interesting. So I'm going to set this equal to 0. And from here, x squared is going to cancel out, which is kind of nice because this is going to give us the solution that we already know. x equals negative 1 half. So we know that. But that's OK. We just you know, verified that one more time. If you look at the second equation, I can just go ahead and expand it. And from here, I should be getting 2x squared because x squared plus x squared, 2x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. Now, if you try to solve this equation by using the quadratic formula, you're going to get the following, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4 minus 4ac. And there you go. You do get a negative discriminant. Awesome. So this is going to give you negative 2 plus minus the square root of 4 minus 8 is equal to negative 4. And if you take the square root of negative 4, there are two complex solutions. 
and then we're going to be getting something like this. X can be written as negative 2 plus minus 2i divided by 4. And from here, you can basically split it up as x equals negative 1 plus i over 2 because I'm at the same time dividing both sides by 2. I hope you don't mind me skipping that step there. And those are going to be my complex solutions. And this basically solves the second cubic equation and we found all the solutions to this equation. And the first one, we didn't find the complex ones because they're going to be a little bit more complicated. Look at the real one. If this is the real one, imagine how complex the complex one is going to be. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And again, thank you Black Pen, Red Pen for the ideas, for the inspiration. Keep up the good work. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.